Hi, I'm Dr. Tracy Marks, a psychiatrist, and I make mental health education videos. Today, I'm answering a question asked by someone in my mental wellness community, and that question is, can a person with bipolar disorder take stimulants to also treat ADHD? Here's a little more background. We'll call him Chad. Chad says that he has several disorders, including anxiety, ADHD, PTSD, and more recently, bipolar disorder. He's been taking two stimulants, Vyvanse and Adderall, and also an antidepressant, clonopin, and pain medications for a physical condition. Chad's insurance changed, and he had to switch clinics and see another provider who accepts his insurance. When he went to the new clinic, the provider would not refill the stimulants, saying that stimulants are not recommended in people with bipolar disorder. Chad is very concerned because he's been taking stimulants for ADHD since he was in high school. He started on them after almost failing ninth grade. Now he's in grad school and he's afraid of failing grad school if he's taken off his stimulants. That's the situation and Chad wanted my thoughts on this. So these are my thoughts and I have to include the disclaimer that this is not personal medical advice from me. You should always check with your provider before making medication adjustments or if you're not satisfied with your provider's opinions, you should look at getting a second opinion. And second opinions are perfectly appropriate when you have questions about your diagnosis and treatment. In general, stimulants are not recommended for people with bipolar disorder. Bipolar disorder is a mood disorder where you have episodes of depression and episodes of mania or hypomania. And for the sake of this video, I'm going to say mania to also include hypomania, but the two are different. Depression and mania are at opposite ends of the spectrum in terms of the kinds of symptoms you experience. Stimulants trigger psychotic episodes, especially in a manic person, but it can also happen in, in the depressed phase as well. Stimulants also cause rapid cycling. Rapid cycling is a subtype of bipolar disorder where you have at least four episodes in a year. In the usual course of bipolar disorder, a person can have an episode of either depression or mania that lasts for months and then resolves. And they may not have another episode of something for either six months or a year. With rapid cycling, it can feel like you're always in some kind of episode of either depression or mania because soon after you come out of one of the episodes, you're entering into another one with very little time in between episodes. So that's rapid cycling. Stimulants can also trigger mixed episodes where you have a blend of depression and mania occurring at the same time. Some people call this being wired but tired. You can have this low mood yet feel at the same time activated and agitated. Mixed episodes are harder to treat than pure depression or mania. So stimulants can make the course of your bipolar disorder more difficult in terms of how often you have episodes and how responsive your episodes are to the standard bipolar treatment using mood stabilizers. Despite these effects, stimulants are not prohibited because these effects don't happen to everyone with bipolar disorder who takes stimulants. It depends on the person, and you can't completely ignore the impact of ADHD on your overall mental well-being. It's not that easy to tell the difference between focus and attention problems that stem from ADHD and disrupted focus and attention stemming from depression or mania. If you have both conditions, sometimes treating your mood state can stabilize your attention to a manageable level. It may not completely take away all of your ADHD symptoms, but it can at least make them tolerable. And this would work for the person who has mild ADHD symptoms that are made worse by their bipolar disorder. But then there are those people whose ADHD symptoms are moderate to severe and treating their mood state is not sufficient to improve their attention, focus, motivation, executive dysfunction, and all of the other things that come along with ADHD. The ADHD still needs to be addressed separately. If I were starting someone on a medication for ADHD who was already being treated for bipolar disorder, I would make sure that they were fully loaded on a robust mood stabilizer for the bipolar disorder first, and then carefully add a small dose of stimulant and watch and see what happens. I would be watching for signs of mania or general signs of instability, like the person just not feeling well or starting to have trouble sleeping or feeling anxious. Those would be signs that the stimulant is causing more disruption. If they didn't have any of these symptoms, I would carefully increase the stimulant to a dose that works for their ADHD and not destabilize their bipolar disorder. A good thing about stimulants is that they work fast and wear off quickly, like within hours. So it should not take that long 
long to see if the stimulant is going to have a negative effect. It may take a day or two to see what direction that you're gonna go in when taking the stimulant, but this is different from antidepressants or even mood stabilizers, which require you to take them consistently for weeks to see the effect. Chad's situation is a little different from what I just described about starting someone on stimulants who's already has a diagnosis of bipolar disorder. It sounds like his ADHD diagnosis came first and the bipolar disorder came second. And this is pretty typical as ADHD usually appears in childhood. Even if you don't get treated for it, you normally manifest some of the symptoms of it starting earlier than you would for developing bipolar disorder. Working in Chad's favor is the fact that he's safely taken stimulants before without them negatively affecting his bipolar disorder. So there's less concern about renewing stimulant prescriptions in someone who has bipolar disorder and has already been taking them safely. That doesn't mean that the stimulants could never destabilize your condition. You would always need to be on alert for signs that you're not as stable as you once were. Unfortunately, I think there's a bias that ADHD symptoms in adults are first world problems and stimulants are bonus medications that you don't really need to have. So if there's any question of whether or not someone should take a stimulant, it's better to err on the side of not taking them because they're not that critical anyway. Well, they may not be critical to sustain life, but the functional effects of untreated ADHD are pretty impactful. Failing school, losing your job, getting in car accidents are not minor consequences for people. So in Chad's case, being in graduate school and having been on stimulants for most of his educational years are reasons to continue taking stimulants. But here's a different red flag in Chad's treatment, and that's the use of stimulants and antidepressants. The use of antidepressants in bipolar disorder is still debated. For some people, the only way their depressive symptoms will resolve or improve is by adding an antidepressant to their mood stabilizer. But in some people, antidepressants can cause a similar instability as stimulants. They can induce mania or make people generally unstable with rapid cycling. Using antidepressants in bipolar disorder normally requires also taking a mood stabilizer of some sort. Mood stabilizer include medications like lithium, lamotrigine, and Depakote, as well as antipsychotic medications like Seroquel and Abilify. Generally, the first-line treatment for someone with bipolar disorder is a mood stabilizer first, and maybe even two different mood stabilizers. The mood stabilizers treat the mania and depression, but if you remain depressed on the mood stabilizer, a secondary option is to add an antidepressant on top of the mood stabilizer to treat the depressive episode. If you have ADHD, I think it's risky to have two agents that could destabilize your condition with the two agents being stimulants and antidepressants. So in Chad's case, an optimal treatment plan could be to taper off the antidepressant and make sure he's on a good mood stabilizer and then continue the stimulants for the ADHD. Because the stimulants could destabilize his bipolar disorder, he may require a second mood stabilizer to give him added protection against the stimulants. And here's a word about him being on two different stimulants. Vyvanse is a long-acting stimulant and many people can do just fine taking a long-acting stimulant once a day and not need anything else. The long-acting stimulants like Vyvanse or Adderall Extended Release may work on average of six to nine or 10 hours. And often that's perfectly adequate for the person who works eight hours a day. People who work longer hours or who work and go to school may need a little more coverage toward the end of the day. And that's where adding the short acting stimulant comes into play. Short acting stimulants like Adderall immediate release lasts on average of three to four hours. Some people will take their long acting stimulant first thing in the morning, and then later in the afternoon, like four or five, they take the short acting one to give them a few more hours. You have to be careful though, taking stimulants late in the afternoon as they can interfere with falling asleep at a decent time. So I know this was more of an advanced topic talking about the nuances of medication management. Another advanced topic is recognizing the difference between bipolar disorder and ADHD since the two have some overlapping symptoms. If you wanna know more about how to recognize the difference between these two, watch this video for a better understanding of that. You can also check out my ebook called Bipolar Basics, which breaks down some of these nuances. Thanks for watching today. See you next time.